The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the June 16th. Terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go look at the circumstance of these markets, what the buyers and the sellers, the bulls and the bears are communicating to you and I at just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but I am here to serve you. So feel free, and now is not too early, to give us a call at 877-927-6648. Of course, internationally, 727-445-1044 on this, what looks to be Turnaround Thursday. But let's go find out for sure. So uh, let's get the show started. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a flat market in the Dow. That's about a 200-point swing or so from bottom to top. The S&P is down three points right now, about a 25-point move or so from top to from the low of the, today and to the high uh, earlier. Uh, composites had about a 45 or 50-point move, or the NQ has. The composites down 14 points. Russell 2000 is off seven. She's trading out 1142. Gold's well off its high, so that's trading right now at $1,300, up 12 buckaroonies. Silver's up 10 cents at 1760. Light Sweet Crude is well off of its low. That's trading out right now at uh, 46.61. Uh, wild markets out here. So uh, we're going to go try to figure out uh, what they're communicating to us. I say wild. And just take a look at what took place. Oh, not on this chart here necessarily. Not that that's a bad chart. But take a look at what took place uh, overseas. Well, you probably already heard this. Of course, I haven't listened to any of these shows. But I'm sure everybody maybe touched on this. You had the Hang Seng down uh, 2%. The Nikkei off 3%. The uh, Shanghai was off just about a half a percent. The uh, DAX closed down 6 tenths of a percent. The FTSE only down a quarter percent. So both of those off of their lows at as uh, well as are we now one of the questions that came in the big moves actually have been inside the uh, currency market euro japanese yen has had a, a huge move uh today we can see right now it's off its session low it's actually made a longer term i believe this a uh, longer term a uh, 0.618 retracement doesn't mean that price is going to stop there but uh in essence it has created it's created the potential of a gartley buy program well how did that happen there we go and and, and re with regard to this currency pair what I'm referring to, and it works this way no matter what it is that you're trading, if you just simply go from the low out here, this is a weekly chart we're looking at, so the week that began July 23rd, 2012. From that low up to the high that took place here, looks like that's the week that began December 8, 2014. If you go from low to high, the actual 0.618 retracement measures out to be 115.38, and the uh, low thus far today, 115.50. you got to like that. You know, how does that work? Now, from a weekly perspective, you got a wide-ranging bar on a weekly basis. On a daily perspective, a uh, real wide-ranging bar as well. So it's not as if they're out of the award woods, but certainly several A to B equals CDs to the downside. But the big movements, if you take a look at the Japanese yen out here, just the yen versus the U.S. dollar. You can also see a big movement here. Now, I, I show a different retracement level here, but let me put this on a weekly time frame, see what's, what's cooking. Of course, there's two different currency pairs, so not too shabby when you take a look at the yen versus the U.S. dollar. But somebody had asked me a question with regard to the yen, the euro yen specifically. I got an email, hey, how come I'm not using that as much? as I had in the past, and simply because that correlation isn't giving me any uh, high probability. 
So I've just kind of uh, shelved it. I pay attention. I look at it periodically. But at this stage here, uh, that carry trade, uh, that currency pair just really hasn't worked with regard to uh, good signals. They also said, well, what's this mean for the Nikkei? And let me show you something. Let me show you this chart right here. This, uh, this chart that we're looking at, hopefully you're watching this on Tiger TV. Here's a couple of correlations. Or noted because the question actually in the email alluded to the fact that if the uh, Japanese yen U.S. dollar was was getting stronger, um, then and the Nikkei was uh, starting to really move lower. Which, by the way, right now it's trading into its February swing point low out there. It's February swing point. Um, you know, isn't our market going to go ahead and? crash as well the crash wasn't the move lower uh, but cra uh, was the was the uh, so I thought the only way to really answer that question right uh, sometimes we try to figure things out in our head and most times if you could have figured it out already you would have right so when when you can't figure something out resort to paper put it down on paper now for you and I put it down on paper means going ahead and looking at a chart out here so the the top uh, this is broken into quadrant so to speak horizontal quadrants and if we take a look at the top quadrant that's the es mini so we've got our futures contract below that though i do have the uh, light sweet crude contract now we're looking at line charts that means that's the close of the uh, session out there not the interest session high or low below that is the nikkei and then below that happens to be the uh, japanese dollar I get the Japanese U.S. dollar uh, currency pair out here. When that uh, bottom panel is moving lower, that says the yen is getting stronger, the U.S. dollar is getting uh, weaker. Now, what I want to do is if you just – you can follow my cursor. So you've got the little white uh, line going back and forth. And uh, you can see that back, back, back in February – I'll get it out of my mouth, don't worry. But back in February, um, that's when Light Swede Crude – this is February 11th uh, – Light Swede Crude made a low. The ES Mini made a low out there. The Nikkei sort of made a low. It was really the next day out here, but it never really took off. If you were to ask, does the Nikkei itself really track with regard to the direction of light sweet crude? And you'd say, yeah, maybe somewhat. Um, does the Nikkei, go take a look at the third panel of my chart compared to the top panel. Does the Nikkei really track the U.S. market? You'd say, eh, a little Maybe directionally, but not really. Uh, if you were to ask, does Lightsweed Crude track the U.S. stock market out here? You know, just, and you, we already know the answer to that, right? It is like a 80%. It's been an 80% correlation. Uh, historically, it's 60. It's 62%. So it's better than a coin flip. But. Over the last, I don't know how many months, umpteen months, then I'm really not. I, I got so, as did you, so tired of hearing them talk about it on the screen, not my screen, but the screen out there, that, um, you know, but nobody's, nobody for the most part really talks about But here, you and I, it's just really, it's on paper. And here's what we're taking. Now, here's the good news and the bad news. The bad news is we can see both the ES Mini has broken through a trend line, rising trend line, as has Light Sweet Crude. So there could be some trouble in River City, and we'll have to go, you know, take a look at that. Now, with regard to the Nikkei, following the, from a directional standpoint, the uh, Japanese yen, the currency pair, I'd say, yeah, you know, you can see the direct correlation uh, there. So you don't want to get too many things too confused out here. But with regard to our market, and that's really what it is that we want to talk about, what we want to take a look at then is, hey, what's going on in the world of light sweet crew? Because when we see this correlation here, you know what's going on. Now, just to really, not really to prove a point, but really for our own edification to see what's going on, if I just simply go to this chart here, this happens to be a, a one-minute chart. So you've got a one-minute chart. Uh, in the left-hand panel is the uh, NIC, is uh, the NQ. Almost said the NQ, right? It's the NQ. So it's a NASDAQ uh, equity futures contract. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. 
Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks, and sorry about that. Talked right through the uh, break. You know, I've got some uh, music that will play in my ears. I must have had that sound turned down. I've got a little clock that tells me when we're going in and out of uh, breaks. Of course, I had that covered up with a uh, chart out there, so everything was really wrong about that. But before we went to break, I think what we were pointing out is the correlation between, uh, in the U.S. market, the correlation between, between lights we crude and the uh, futures contracts. The, the, the stock market, too, but obviously these things are trading in essence in sync now it's a directional thing so a tick for tick but just to you know we take a look at market profiles as an example as one of our tools out here this is a one minute chart that we're looking at so left hand panel nq center panel es right hand panel is the uh, light sweet crude uh, contract let me get rid of show the left scale okay now if and you follow if you follow my cursor uh, what you'll see i've got this setting right at the uh, bar that was hitting the top of the one minute NQ and ES, top of their TAS market profiles. Now, I'm going to pull that away a little bit. You see how, here, I'm going to actually use my cursor. See how that point of control, little dashed line closer to the solid line on the top for both the ES and the NQ out there? That told us what? That told us that that is where the snipers, all right, that's where the sellers were sitting, and that uh, very likely price was going to go and visit the very bottom of the uh, box. And we'll get one minute chart inside the ES, it's 2058. Uh, now, at the same time, I'm going to set my cursor, look on the very right hand panel where the light sweet crude is, and see that at the same time that the ES and NQ were testing resistance. What the, uh, what the uh, Light Sweet Crude contract was doing was trading right below a market profile, which it then proceeded to in a period of three minutes. You move from the 4660 level down to about uh, 40, what is it, 4630. 4627 out there so in sync that really put pressure and in here we can take a look at this i've got the same chart for you on a 10 minute time frame out here and so the guess the point is with regard to the markets we certainly want to go we're going to want to take if this is really turnaround thursday we still ought to see more turnaround inside of light sweet crude and so we'll look at the daily chart, but here is the uh, here's the uh, 10 minute chart uh, for Lightsweet Crude. You can see, let me pull this back for each of them. We can see this morning 
um, as uh, so I'll set it right here up towards the high. So if you're taking a look at where the crosshair almost is really inside the NQ, see where the ES and the NQ made highs, then they came a tumbling down, right? They came a tumbling down this morning. Light speed crude was trying to uh, move out of this uh, current uh, TAS profile. Let me update this here. It looks like there's a brand new box. Uh, is that it? Yeah, that has uh, formed out here. So resistance inside of Light Sweet Crude and the way that this box is formed here, it doesn't... Uh, it's not, it's not a really great box. You like to see this form above the prior one. Nonetheless, right now, you've got support at 46.22. You've got resistance at 46.79. So that's what's going on, you know, correlation-wise and intraday. Now let's go take a look at some of the other chart patterns out here. But first, we want to go to uh, Denver, Colorado, and speak with uh, Daisy May. Daisy May, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you this afternoon or this morning for you? Is it this morning? I'm getting pretty hot in here. Getting hot. Hot in yeah, Colorado. Yeah, we had a hot day yesterday, and it's a hot day today already. Well, and now, do you like hot weather in Colorado, or you prefer it to be in the 70s? I, yeah, I prefer the se low 70s. <laughs> low 70s. Okay, all right. Well, you know, in Florida, uh, I was speaking on behalf of uh, myself, when it gets below 70, that's when we turn the heat on. Right, right. <laughs> hey, you want to take a look at Solar City? And uh, tell right. us what you're doing, how we can help you, and you know what's okay. the time frame trade that you're looking for. Right, I'd like as long as possible time frame for this, um, just because I'm a fan of solar. Okay. Um, and uh, I know it it took a big hit um, a while back. You know, it, it had been around 28, 29. It took a big hit, and then some days it'll go up five percent, and then it'll fall back, and I just. I don't understand what's going on with it or whether I should just stay away from it or if something like FSLR would be better or, you know. Well, let's try it. Let's see. Let's see if we can answer uh, the question for, for both of them. So in the case of Solar City, it uh, looks like maybe this uh, was a IPO back in January of 2013. And uh, the low of the monthly candle, January, was 1195 to 1694. And right now you're trading out at or is trading out at uh, 2130. So it's made its way back all the way, in essence, you know, to that o IPO area. And um, last month, it certainly wasn't pushing higher with volume. It was pushing lower with volume. So that's what the monthly chart uh, shows us. If we go switch over to a weekly chart, it also had some problems here. Uh, and this is this is big problems uh, because at the as it says, pushed lower twice now since February. Uh, remember, our market has made a bottom since February and has pushed higher. In the case of Solar City in February, much like the markets, it was pushing lower with 67 million shares. That's the week that began February 8th. The week that began May 9th, it was pushing lower again with 67 million shares. So what we like to see, if you're looking for a long-term holding on this, something that has basically come all the way back to its uh, initial public offering time period, you'd really like to see some kind of sign of strength out there. And then by the uh, pullback, that would be what would be ideal for you, as opposed to seeing these types of... So, so what the stock chart is at least communicating to you is that this thing keeps pushing lower with volume. So you don't really have somebody to draft out there, you know, some large buyers out here. On a daily basis, um, what this had done is not too long ago, this is on May 10th, we saw a big gap to the downside with uh, 26 million shares there. That low, which is 1650, has not been tested. I would be patient and wait to see if it pulls back into that area. Ideally, you would see it uh, test 1650, uh, do it with well less than 26 million shares, and then afterwards look for some kind of sign of strength. Look for some big volume to the upside, wide price spread, accelerated volume, something along those lines. So at, at this stage here, I just don't see it based on you looking for a longer term holding and what the weekly charts are telling us as price has been pushing lower and we haven't seen any kind of sign of strength really to the upside. I think, uh, Daisy, may you mentioned floor, uh, FSLR, was that the, the other one? Right. Yeah, so if we take a look at uh, first solar out here, see if it's got any better message. Well, uh, let me put this on a monthly chart out here and uh, not a whole lot better. Now this has been around longer 
This went uh, public, or my data goes back at least to December 2006 out here. Um, you know, it looks better than it looks better than uh, Solar City, but uh, in reality, from a daily perspective out here. Let me see here. This is trading right now into its last swing point, which was May 19th. That had 3 million shares. You're pulling back in there with light volume. But I would imagine this whole sector, you know, would really move at the same time out here. And maybe wow. is, maybe now is just not the time. That's what I'm seeing. All right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. You bet. Stay cool. That was Daisy May in Denver, and let's take a look at both Florida Solar uh, as well as uh, Solar City out here. Let me just put it on a weekly, real quick. And uh, yeah, I'm just not seeing it. I'd say Daisy in the case of uh, First Solar, um, you know, pretty good chance this thing's going to pull back into the 40-ish dollar area. And right now today, it's trading at 48.24. This is Steve Rhodes with TFN. I'm not going to go through this break. We'll be right back. Quiet Markets investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs> Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow's up about seven. S&P is off three. Let's stay in Colorado. This time, let's go to uh, Scott. I believe Scott is in Colorado Springs. Yes, sir. How are you doing today, Scott? Good. How are you? 
Good. Now you got to give us the weather. The weather report there is it uh, is it as warming in uh, Colorado Springs as it is in Denver today? Oh yeah, yeah. It's hot here too. It was it was over seventy before before seven o'clock this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but but you probably I don't know. Is it you can just take a quick drive up to Pikes Peak. It's probably about twenty degrees cooler up there. Or so. Oh yeah, yeah. Sure, sure would be. Yeah. Yeah, you could cool down. Well, how can I help you today? I just I wanted to number one reiterate what the guy said last week about how how you have improved in your teachings in your in your in and the way you do things and the class the other night as you say is worth millions. Well, thank you. Know, you. It, it just. It's it's off the charts. Pardon the pun, but <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's I like that. I like that. Well, but it, it's it's great, like you say, to be able to look at a chart and know what side to be on. It, you know, it's just it's incredible, Steve. Well, I, look, I I really appreciate uh, that comment. Uh, I think you're referring to what Brent had called in uh, from California, um, yeah, and yeah. you know offered something similar. And look, it it means a lot. It means a lot to me uh, that uh, both of you uh, think that. Uh, the, you know, the whole idea in in life is you can't touch someone unless you've been touched, and that's why guys like myself and Larry and Tom and Basil and David and Andy, uh, and uh, you know, all spend the time that we do and have our experiences to be able to share that with uh, with each of you. And that's why I think each of us we come to the desk, we come to the charts, and uh, try to share that, uh, try to share that with everyone. Um, and so, just simply the mere fact that. Uh, that we're able to touch uh, folks like you out there. It's, uh, you know, it means everything in the world. So I appreciate that very, very much. Yeah, I, I've been I've been listening to TFNN and watching for about six, seven years now, and everybody has something to teach. And it's, and it's all top quality stuff, and it's just, it's incredible. It's just incredible. Uh, it, yeah, it's great. And it's great to, um, you know, when you take a look, it's empowering. Um, and it's really empowering. It's like anything really in, in life, no matter what it is that you're doing. Each of us, we start a, uh, uh, you know, a new task and uh, we kind of dabble at it. That's really the first phase. You know, maybe it's a new sport. Maybe it's learning technical analysis. Uh, maybe it's writing, whatever it might be. And then that first phase of anything we do, we're kind of dabblers and, and we do it and we're like, hey, this is cool. This is fun. And then we run into an obstacle. Everybody always runs into an obstacle. And then at, at that point in time, you know, dabble. Uh, that really don't have a total interest in it will just simply put it all down. Other folks will go ahead and push through that first obstacle, you know, learn some other tools, pull in some other information, and then get to that next level. And typically, to that next, maybe it's you know just learning how to play the game of tennis or something, and you just can't get the backhand to work or whatever it is, or in charting, you know, you just don't quite actually see it out there. And uh, in, in that, uh, and then you get to that roadblock, and a lot of times people will go ahead and just throw it off the side and do something different. But anyone who wants to master anything in life, whether it's a technical analysis or anything, you have to anticipate you're going to hit those roadblocks. And when you get to those roadblocks, because you anticipate it, that's when you really open up those years, you start looking around, you work hard at it, you put more time into it, and you know you're going to, just like that seedling that's trying to get through that uh, big crack or that, that hard surface, once it's through, it's free. And then once you've mastered it, then all of a sudden your whole world open, uh, opens up. And that's really what, you know, each of us here at TFN want to do is be able to help guys like you, uh, everybody in the den. That's what the guys in the den are doing, guys and gals in the den. You know, it's really to help you be able to master you know, that, that which we do out here. And part of mastering what we do is to recognize that at any point in time, the market can change, just like weather. How often does weather patterns change in Colorado Springs, Scott? Yeah, uh, a couple times a day. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you, you know yeah. you've, got, you've got to be able to adapt, just like the right. weather. And when it changes, you know, if it's pouring rain and you got an umbrella, you're going to use it. Um, yeah. So, you know, same thing really in the market. Our umbrellas happen to be stops. Um, you know, when it starts to rain, you just want to make sure that the market's communicating something else to you, and uh, don't uh, and, and just read that, read that, uh, read that. So, again, uh, much appreciated. I'm glad that you attended and that you uh, that you like the workshop. Uh, put a lot of hours in it, and it's a tool that I think that everybody will be. I know though, everybody will be able to use to help eliminate one side of the trade. So, it's thanks exactly. again, much appreciated. 
Anything exactly. else? Steve? And, and if, if there's anybody new out there, just like you said, I mean, I've had to start over three, four times, you know, because, you know, but you can't, you can't stop trying. You know, you can't stop learning. No, and because if you're not key. if you're not growing, you're dying. All right, deal. You get yep, just kind exactly. of have two choices, and yep. um, and it's just that way with with every you know with anything anything that I've ever done. I'm sure anything that you've ever done, you, the, the whole idea of the roadblock is that something's happening for you, not to you. Many times people interpret right. it as something's happened to me, so I'm going to stop. And yeah. That was really the whole point of the universe. It wasn't. It was happening for you, and you've just got to go out. A lot of times you just have to go out and find a coach. That's what <laughs> each of us, I think, here at TFNN are, is each of us are these coaches to help you through those roadblocks out there. Exactly. And I appreciate every one of you. Well, Thanks, thank you. Steve. You bet. Thanks okay. so much for calling. That was uh, Scott in uh, Colorado Springs. Uh, anybody else who wants to call and uh, compliment somebody here at TFNN, hey, the phone lines are open. Now, let's try to utilize some of the technical tools and see if we can gauge and figure out whether this is really turnaround Thursday or whether this is just head fake Thursday out here. And the easiest place to start is to go look at that. We'll start with the shorter term pattern first, because that's where you're going to see a change take place, right? So let's go take a look at the NQ. Um, just pick that because it was on the right hand side of my screen out here. So here's what we know about a 30 minute chart for the NQ. We know that price was moving down. That's pretty clear, right? But as it was moving down into the 11 a.m. time frame, really it began here at 10 a.m., right? So the market opens in you know, 9.30. We see a big push into a 10 a.m. It's pushing down. Seems like the sky is falling. But the reality was there wasn't any energy. That's why you've got that little black line. It was moving lower with less relative energy out there. The same thing, it can continue to do that uh, as price did here at 1030. And it can continue to do that for as long as it wants. It can even break that pattern to finally get the energy. However, when the NQ was making its low thus far today, the low out there, by the way, was uh, 43.52.50. The very next candle session was when the cavalry rushed in. You see, we don't know when the cavalry is coming, and that's both the bullish and bearish cavalry out here. In this case, it was the bullish cavalry that rushed in here. We had a couple of different signals. Number one, we can see that it formed a nice old bullish engulfing candle, nice old morning star candle, three river morning star candle out there. So on the 30 minute chart, you, we know where the uh, so we know where the buyers are are flanked out. I mean, it, it could not be clearer to us that that because that's really the meaning of the uh, bullish reversal signals is one it tells you you know where your level of support is that's going to be the low of the session so far then our TAS market profiles and when we take a look at our TAS market profiles price broke through it in a huge way at 1230 so between 12 and 1230 broke above those market profiles out there and we've got uh, Scott called and talked about the webinar we've got this little bullish crossover one of the tools that Scott learned uh, at uh, the webinar this past uh, Tuesday. This is Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. We'll go look at the two-hour charts as well. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Direction's daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed 
Lyft has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back. Uh, Dow's up 11. S&P is off 3. Before we go back and take a look at some intraday charts uh, in the NQ, let's go. contract yeah uh, yes you are okay all right so for for viewers at home we'll just pull up the gld just to get a framework a reference of michael said it got over its most recent high which was probably on april 29th or may 2nd and the volume there was 19 million and 12 million and today you're at 15 million shares what we were looking for is if gold uh the actual physical metal closes underneath that swing point you could have a failure at a swing point on price and volume at this stage here and the number that michael's actually looking at is 1308 and we're trading at 1298 right now it doesn't look like you would have a failure on volume but you certainly could have a failure on uh, price now today's candle if uh, gold were to close right here if gold the co if the uh, contract uh the equity if the uh uh, electronic contract closed right now we would have a, a shooting star so you would have which is the opposite of a hammer candle so a shooting star would be where a hammer candle is very bullish a shooting star therefore would be very bearish which would then mean now i don't know if that's what the candle is going to be or not michael let's assume that it is for the time being and then if it is you would want to have your stop tucked somewhere up above today's high uh, because if you were to see a close above that um, then you'd really have a, a failure um, you know, on a short uh, type of a uh, um, of a uh, short type of a trade inside of gold. Let's say that uh, volume or not doesn't matter. You get a close back below that uh, swing point. That's the first thing you're going to look for, right? Because then you'd at least have uh, some type of failure. So that 1308 is an important level to pay attention to. The next levels that you would be looking at to the downside is you want to see gold get below 1286 sooner than later. 
When it gets below 1286, then that says that what you ought to see is a run down to about the 1234 level. Now, from a trade standpoint, what I didn't ask you and I should have is what's your time frame? What are you looking at? Um, you know, as far as length of time, do you have a price? What, what's your trading plan and what's your target area? So I can also look at those with you. Um, using a 60 minute charts, um, I'm. Uh I guess I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm just wondering. No, if that's fine. Is. No, that's that's what I'm just trying to. So, like they say, for example, if you're using 60-minute charts, then we ought to at least go take a look at 60-minute charts for you. And what I can also do is we can take a look at what our profile levels are on the 60-minute charts. So just to you know give you some some additional pieces of information here. Now, the nice thing in using a 60-minute chart. Um, by any chance, are you watching us on Tiger TV? Uh huh. Okay, so I'm going to turn price off here, and you're going to notice all these red horizontal lines are your TAS market profiles. And relatively bullish, as you can see, the stair-step approach to the upside, and typically those lows on a market that's moving higher are going to go ahead and act as support. I'll go ahead and turn prices back on. Um, and you can see that they pretty much did during the entire move. Now, this is just where I have it uh, from the uh, trading day of uh, June 10th. So I just have a few days out here. Now, the positive from your standpoint on a 60 minute time frame is we can see that the most recent TAS market profile failed and failed miserably. So with regard to your time frame, uh, that support level should have been 1310. You're at 1291.50 right now. So, um, you know, I would say that you certainly don't want to see this thing today close above 13. We'd call it 1312. Um, but uh, there's no new profile or anything like that that has shown up. And I'd say that the daily time frames that you and I just looked at, daily and weekly, are what you would be looking at uh, next out here uh, for, uh, for gold. Um, how else can I tell you? What other questions, you know, do uh, you I was do? wondering, um, do you show on the, on the Ninja Ch Trader chart, do you have uh, if it's moving up uh, with relative strength? So if we take a look at the uh, and here, I'm going to put up the continuous contract. It would show the same thing. Let me go ahead and hit my update key. Um, it it is it. Well, here's the thing. So take a look at it like this. You see, on the trading session which you were using as a benchmark, May second, in order to go ahead and make a trade, that's where the price was certainly moving higher, doing it less relative strength out there. Today's move higher. Um, you know, certainly was with with didn't have that same divergent pattern. However, any close below the high of May 2nd says that that pattern is still in play. So, you know, that combined with the shooting star. Now, on this Ninja Trader chart that we're taking a look at, the key level here for you to be watching, and now this number will change tomorrow. It'll change on uh, Sunday and Sunday evening and Monday. But right now, 1271.30 is the number that you're looking at. If you if see gold get below 1271.30, tomorrow will probably be just a tad higher than that. Then you can breathe a little bit easier out here. That's going to be the point in time where uh, you could really see sellers try to get on board that trend out there. But, you know, even as we speak right now, it's still a relatively bullish looking chart out here. But you caught it, it sounds like, at the right time. As long as you use some of these parameters, like do not let it get above today's high, um, you know, you've, you've got a trade out there. And I'd say congratulations on your entry. Thanks, Steve. And uh, do you show any uh, charts of uh, in, uh, institutional uh, uh, pressure still high on the short side? or? Well, yeah, when, uh, the, sure. So that's a great question. And, and what everybody must ask themselves, because there's a lot of volume out here, so that means there were a lot of buyers and sellers. And the question that Michael is asking here is really, hey, what are the large commercial traders doing? A lot of contracts trading hands. So with everybody being so bullish, and it's pretty much hard to find the bears out there, you've got to ask yourself, who was selling? Who was selling into that market? The same question could be asked last week. And last week, what I know, what you know, what now all of the TFN and listeners know, is that the, as gold was moving higher, large commercial traders were the ones that were taking the net short positions inside gold. So last week, they moved to an even higher net short position. When and how this is going to crack, Michael, I don't know. I just know that these guys have a lot of money and they can afford to be long wrong. 
are on the wrong side of the trade much longer than you or I. So just go ahead and use stops. But at some point in time, this thing's going to crack. Of course, somebody might say, well, geez, that's really a great prognostication, Steve. But that answered your question with regard to what commercial yeah. traders are doing. All right, my friend? Thank you so much. You bet. That was Michael in Omaha, Nebraska. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Today, many commodities are trading at relative lows. And now you can take advantage with EverBank's new limited-time, five-year, market-safe currency comeback CD. This indexed and U.S. dollar-denominated CD offers 100% principal protection and is based on the equally weighted performance of currencies of Australia, Canada, Chile, Mexico, and South Africa. These five countries are especially rich in commodities, and the respective currencies are poised to do well should commodity prices begin to recover. Keep in mind that no APY, a periodic rate of interest, is paid on the CD. Don't miss out on this innovative new financial opportunity. CDs must be opened and funded by the upcoming July 14th deadline. To apply online and learn more about the CD, including product terms and disclosures, visit everbank.com forward slash TFNN now. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. It's 2016 and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern Time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin, as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, let's go back to the uh, equity futures contracts. We were take a look at. We looked at the NQ 30-minute chart out there. The same pattern inside the NQ, by the way, in the 30-minute chart was there in the ES inside the uh, Russell 2000. So we know, at least on an intraday chart, uh, things were pushing lower, doing less energy out there, and then they bounced. Now, what you like to do is go from the shorter-term chart that you were looking at and then bump it up another level. So in this case here, we're going to the two-hour charts. Now, in this case, what I'm showing you, if you're watching this on Tiger TV, a four-panel view, upper left-hand corner is the NQ, upper right is the ES Mini, lower left is the Russell 2000, lower right is the Dow. Now, the biggest moves thus far off of that... Uh, 30-minute uh, bounce area, those price relative strength divergent patterns, have really come from the NQ and the Dow. Now, what I mean by that uh, is moving up to a natural level that could be resistance. And if you're watching us on Tiger TV, the white horizontal lines that you're looking at happen to be the 120-minute TAS market profiles out there. Now, old support 
which is what inside the NQ. Let me blow this up on the screen for you. Old support. You see how that point of control little dash line closer to the bottom? much further away from the top out there. That level really should have uh, held as a support. However, this box that formed here, really very bearish, okay? Now, the reason that it's bearish is that when it formed, see right here, see how price was actually below the box? It didn't form within the box like this previous one did. When you have a brand new box that uh, forms and price has already moved beyond it, in this case here, the uh, support level, it just is telling us that there's a lot, that's a huge front line, uh, in this case here, that the bulls will have to get through. That's a steamroller. That's a, uh, uh, that's a, uh, uh, what's his name, James Taylor steamroller type uh, song out there. And you can see that that has held as resistance thus far. So what does that mean? Look. It means that the NQ, if it's able to close above, and it's not trading that far away from it, 4,400.5, really what you'd like to see is it close above uh, 4,406.70. That will tell you that the bulls will have steamrolled those bears out there because that should be a significant level of resistance that would be the next phase that you would be looking for inside the dow futures the dow futures do not have the same type of message yeah the point of control a little bit closer to the bottom of the box but not so much i mean it is but we can see that it's really the bottom of the box that held as uh resistance thus far the actual bottom of that box on a 120 minute time frame is 17,644. The actual interest session high was 17,675. That's right. You can't get closer to hitting resistance and then rejecting into pulling back than as it's done thus far. That doesn't mean it's over. It does mean it's hit resistance. It does mean if you see the Dow futures close above 17,674, what you would anticipate is the first move to 17,704 and then the 17,749. And you get above 17,749, you can officially call it turnaround Thursday. Now, it doesn't have to do all that today. That's the thing about the futures contracts. It can start doing it at 6 o'clock this evening. It can do it at 1 in the morning. It can do it, you know. So, so But those are the levels that you want to be uh, paying attention to, pay, paying attention to. And then I would say, finally, um, if you see the ES Mini, you wake up tomorrow morning or you wake up at 2 in the morning, you see the ES Mini trading above, we'll just call it 2070. Um, then that is telling you that it was officially turnaround Thursday. Otherwise, if price gets up to 2070 and then starts the beeline to the downside, the selling pressure is not over, and you probably can anticipate that it will continue for days to come. So at this stage of the game, eh, turnaround, turnaround Thursday is in full swing. But uh, you know what? I think we have to get another vote on it. So stay tuned, folks. Let's go to our official polar bear, David White. Stay tuned. He'll be up next. And we got the Tom O'Brien Show from 3 to 5 and Andy Heck from 5 to 6 to take it on home. Hey, thanks to all the callers today. Have a great Thursday. We'll see you on Fantastic Friday. Take care, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.